All right. Okay, gang, I think we're set to go. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Shirley, Executive Director of the Arts and Cultural Alliance of Sarasota County. And our program this evening is being broadcast from the Court uh, Cabaret uh, at Florida Studio Theater on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, I'd like the audience to know that at the uh, end of our formal question period, if we have time, we will be taking some a few questions from the audience, if it allows. So if you have something, just write your question in and we'll be picking up on it. Tonight, we're joined by a group of outstanding citizens who have made the commitment to serve our community in the very important role of Sarasota County Commissioner, should they be elected on November 3rd. These are critical positions that will affect the future of Sarasota County for years to come. And I would like to personally thank each and every one of you for being willing to take on the task of leadership at this level. It's an awesome responsibility and one that will dominate your life and shape the core direction of the future of our region for years to come. No matter what the outcome on November 3rd, we sincerely thank you for your willingness to serve and to lead. Um, I, I would like to comment to the candidates. This is a, uh, a get to know the candidates session. We're not structuring it as a debate. We really want to get to know you and what you think. And uh, we certainly appreciate you taking the time out of your really busy schedules to be here. We're going to start this evening by giving each of the candidates a brief opportunity to introduce themselves and let us know a little bit about you. Uh, if you could, in order to get to all the issues, try to keep your initial comments to about one minute and let us know some things about you. Unfortunately, the District 1 incumbent, Mike Moran, is not able to join us this evening because of a, a medical emergency in his family. And we want Commissioner Moran to know that our thoughts and prayers are with him and with his family, and we hope that they are able to pull through this with, uh, as well as possible. Um, Commissioner Moran did complete our arts and cultural survey that we did earlier in the year, and if you want to know his views, you can find them on our website under the survey. So let's start tonight with the candidate from District 1, Mark Pinkos. Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Jim, and thank you for your leadership uh, in this uh, great alliance. And I also want to say thank you to all the uh, folks that are listening tonight, as well as also the various people, the candidates that are that are joining me. Uh, my name again is Mark Piancos, and I'm running for Sarasota County Commission District One, uh, which is the northernmost uh, district uh, in Sarasota County. Um, again, uh, I received my bachelor's and master's degree from Northern Illinois University and uh, the equivalent of a second master's degree from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee uh, in administrative leadership. And I earned my doctorate degree from the University of Southern California. Uh, throughout my life, uh, I've been involved uh, in schools. I had a great uh, 45 year career as a teacher, school counselor, assistant principal, principal uh, and superintendent. Uh, and during those times, I had many opportunities to work with staff and students and their parents uh, in making sure that the arts were vital in our schools. I've also been involved in politics uh, all my life. Um, locally here, uh, I'm involved with the Polish American Association of Sarasota. I'm also at the national level, the National uh, Polish American Congress. I'm the vice president for Polish, uh, excuse me, for public uh, relations. I also in 2015 was uh, awarded the uh, Cavaliers Cross of Merit from the President of Poland uh, for my activities to bring Poland and America together. I was quite honored about that. Uh, again, uh, we're, uh, uh, my wife and I are uh, live in the Meadows. I'm an elected board member on the Meadows Community Association. 7,000 people live in the Meadows. Uh, we also are involved with uh, the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, we're spring training staff members. We have uh, just celebrated our 48th wedding anniversary. We have three great kids uh, and two grandchildren. We love Sarasota. We've been coming here ever since our honeymoon, visited, Sarah, uh, visited Florida many, many, many times, but now we call this our home. And again, we enjoy the arts and we enjoy the opportunity to talk a little bit about how important they are to Sarasota County. So thanks for listening. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate that. Now let's hear from District 3 incumbent, uh, former state senator and current uh, commissioner for the Sarasota County, Nancy Dietrich. Nancy, tell us a little bit about yourself. I think you're muted.
Hey, Jim, is that better? Now we got it. <laughs> okay. Um, I know most of you, many of you anyway, and uh, you know me. I kind of think this isn't the debate everybody was tuning into tonight, but here we are also. <laughs> we're, we're the pregame show, I guess. This is the real show. Oh, yeah, this is the real debate. <laughs> so uh, I've lived in my community in my same zip code here for 42 years. I have three grown sons, nine grandchildren. And if you drew a little two mile circle, we all live in the circle. So as a grandmother, I'm very fortunate that my grandkids don't live up north. Um, I owned Osprey Mortgage Company for 25 years in Venice and it was a great company. I served on the school board and not only did my kids go to the local schools, but all my grandkids go to Sarasota schools. And my oldest grandson uh, had a real struggle with school, bashful issues and whatnots, but he did learn to play the piano on that, those little keyboards in kindergarten and it was a life changer for him. It turns out, you know, he's a, a, a classical pianist. So the arts have been important to me as a school board member, as a state representative, as a state senator, and now as county commission, Jim, you just appeared before us this week. So you know how important it is to have a friend in government when you're trying to promote the arts and especially during the struggle we're currently having with COVID. So I think that's probably enough and I look forward to your questions. Well, thank you, Nancy, we appreciate it. Also running in district three is Corey Hutchison. Corey, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jim Shirley, for hosting us, for having us here. Thank you to all who are watching. I'm Corey Hutchinson, and I'm running for Sarasota County Commission District 3. I'm a lifelong Sarasota native. I was born in Sarasota, moved to Northport with my family when I was four. My fiance and I own a home here in Northport um, where we uh, love the area and we love this county and our community. Community service is a passion of mine. I work currently in education as a college and career advisor at Laurel Nakoma School. I understand how important the arts are to our students and to our families. I've built a lot of relationships with many community members, not just for nonprofits, but also our students, our families, our parents. And the arts have helped so many of our kids um, when they were struggling or even find their creative motions and finding out things that they were good at that they had never considered before. The arts are extremely important to our community um, and we need to promote that. I have a nonprofit in Northport called Holly's Hope, which uh, works to provide better mental health resources. We are focusing extremely on students and veterans and trying to promote better mental health resources for them. That's another uh, passion of mine as it um, comes to the community is mental health, which I believe arts can tie into. So uh, I love your association and um, definitely will be a great friend to you all if I'm elected on the Sarasota County Commission. Thank you, Corey, we appreciate that. Now our final seat this year is District 5 and here we have two candidates that are new to the political scene. Uh, and uh, this seat is open because Commissioner Charles Hines has turned out after uh, several years of dedicated service as a commissioner for Sarasota County and we'd like to thank Commissioner Hines for the hard work, the leadership, and all the things that he's done for our community. So first, let's hear from Alice White as the candidate or a candidate for District 5. Alice? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, you, what, one thing I really enjoy about these uh, forums is, is hearing everyone's personal stories. I, I just really I think that's really important, and I enjoy hearing about um, people's families. But I was born in uh, Newark, New Jersey, and relocated to Northport in 1990. I taught school for 36 years, high school algebra, and then elementary school in Inglewood. I retired at the end of 2018, and uh, I always work to incorporate uh, art into my lessons uh, whenever I was able to, which was most of the time. Uh, and that was really done so that I could address uh, all of the students' learning styles. I had students that just loved, of course, to, to uh, work with their hands and always having an art component in the classroom um, really was able to get them to develop 
uh, those fine motor skills and also um, learn uh, according to their, their uh, individual learning styles. Um, I have one son, Jake, he was born here in 1991. I've served on a number of advisory boards in the city of Northport, such as the Beautification and Tree Council, the Citizen Tax Oversight Committee, and the Sarasota Historical Commission, because I just love history. One of my favorite expressions is what is past is prologue. I've served on a number of nonprofit boards, including the Leaven Bay Conservancy during the Wildflower Preserve acquisition, uh, the uh, Sarasota Sierra Club, and I formed a 501c3 nonprofit group called People for Trees in 1997. And through that group, I spearheaded uh, annual events such as the Tree Festival since 1999 here in Northport and the Tour to Northport Bicycle Ride um, since 2010. Ideas that I actually got from the county because the Sarasota County had a tree fair in the 90s. And then, of course, I took part in the first Tour to Parks Bicycle Ride. And I thought, hey, I need to bring something like that to Northport. So I did. Um, I've received numerous Keep Sarasota County Beautiful Awards. Uh, I've been involved uh, with the writing of the comprehensive plan for Northport that was adopted in 1997, uh, rewrites to our city's unified land development codes, and I engaged in the process for the original adoption of our 2050 Sarasota County comp plan. Um, I do have experience in starting up and managing small entre entrepreneur type businesses to supplement my teaching income all the time. Um, I was a Northport citizen of the year in 2014 and uh, i'm looking forward uh to this um this forum so thank you jim for inviting me and thank you alice unfortunately the other candidate for district five ron Cutsinger, is not able to attend this evening due to a conflicting commitment so now that we've met all of the candidates we have a few questions that have been provided to us by the community and we're going to ask the same question of each candidate and uh, if each of you could respond uh with your thinking in this area we would appreciate it. And our first question is, what is your position regarding implementing growth of arts and cultural institutions in the community where it is necessary for long-term viability, sustainability, and vitality? So let's start with Alice on this one. <laughs> Thank you get you, to be Alice. first off the bat. I here. know, I think this happened in a forum I was in the other night too. It was a very convoluted question. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, Would you like well, me to repeat the question? Yes, go ahead, go ahead. All right, the, the question again is, what is your position regarding implementing growth of arts and cultural institutions in our community where it's necessary for long-term viability, sustainability, and vitality? Yes. Well, I think first and foremost, uh, living in Northport for 30 years, that um, I'd like to see expansion more uh, of the arts into South County, uh, especially Northport. Um, even when I look up to see what um, the, uh, the Arts Alliance has been involved in, um, it seems like most of those, all of those are in uh, the city of Sarasota or in North. County. So I really would like to see that brought down here. We have some um, exciting, vibrant uh, talent down here, uh, the Northport Arts Center, for example, and need to um, really uh, focus on, on that and bring some more of the resources that we have available down here. Um, there's the Hermitage Retreat, uh, which a lot of people I'm always, um, you know, perplex as to why they've never heard of it before. And they really, we really need to promote that and to get more people to embrace that. It's, it's a wonderful addition um, to Sarasota County. Uh, of course, the whole Dearborn Street area is, uh, has a uniqueness of its own. And here in Northport, Warm Mineral Springs is our, our cultural attraction. Um, I've always personally liked the Myakahatchee Creek because that really uh, has a history behind it, and it really um, is indicative of our what's called our cracker cowboy history in this area when this was all ranch land, and um, and like to see uh, a better uh, connection with that being made. Um, and what I would like to do and is meet with those who are most involved in and in with this issue, such as those from the Northport Arts Center, 
uh, and the Englewood Art Center to gather input because that's that's what I do. That's what I did as a teacher. Uh, we can't be expected to know all the answers and anybody who tries to, you're going to exhaust yourself. So I reach out to people and ask for their input. What, what could be done to bring um, more of the arts resources down to South County? Thank you. Mark, why don't we have your response on your position regarding implementing growth of arts and cultural institutions in the community? Good question. Uh, great question uh, to ask. Uh, I think what's really critical, and in, in if people were watching a little bit early uh, before the program started, uh, some of the information from the annual report from the Alliance was, was on there. And uh, I think what's really significant is to take a look at some numbers. You know, for example, there's uh, the impact on Sarasota County, Sarasota County, uh, the arts and culture, they have an impact of $295 million. And in the region, it's approximately $340 million. That's basically Sarasota and Manatee uh, counties. Uh, Full-time employees, approximately 7,500, and that generates income uh, to, the, to their households of approximately $167 million. And then taxes locally here in our county, about $12 million, a little over that, and about $20 million to the state. Just the economic impact is, is amazing, but we can, and we'll need to, especially coming out of COVID-19, uh, we need to just emphasize how important the arts and cultural activities are to our, com to our community. People come here for many reasons. Some of them are, are snowbirds. Some of them are full-time residents. Now, they come here to be able to enjoy many things that make our region outstanding. And we know what they are, the beaches, golfing, spring training baseball, uh, all sorts of things like that. But the culture and the arts are unbelievable. So whatever we can do to work together to try to make sure that they are operating as successfully as possible is crucial. You know, Richard Russell at one of the uh, uh, recent commission meetings talked about using some of the CARES Act money from the federal government in the amount of around $5 million to help the, the hard hit culture and arts area. I'm supportive of that. So we, we need to work together to continue to make this such a special area, a Mecca for many people who come here to enjoy the arts and culture. Thank you, Mark. Corey, what's your view on this? Uh, I'm gonna echo what Mark said about the economic impact. Um, that's extremely huge, the economic impact of our events and not just our institutions that are always here, but our events too. And um, since my district, South County, I'm going to talk a little bit about South County. Venice has an amazing chalk festival every year, along with other festivals and events that they have. Sarasota has them too. Um, Northport has had some, but I want to try to work to get um, some more down into South County and get some of our local artists down there involved as well. These events bring in so much revenue, so much tourism for our area. And when you look at how badly our economy has been hit from COVID, that could be one of the catalysts that jumpstarts our economy again is having events as it's safe to do so and, and bringing people out to gather and celebrate art. One of the things that we can really do is continue to partner with our local schools to support our talented artists that we have, not just in our classrooms, but staff and parents and families who make art and they just maybe do it for fun, but they haven't had the opportunity to display it out in public work with those individuals to, to get that art out there and really celebrate our talent and our community. I wanna look at any grants and things that we can obtain from the state level. There are many for arts and culture that you can get that can help us promote some of these projects. I've mentioned um, grants and funding for other things, uh, but I think that we would be remiss if we didn't look at them for art and cultural events as well. Thank you, Gory. And last but not least, uh, Commissioner, if you could uh, give us your views on this, Nancy. Keep forgetting to unmute. There we go. <laughs> um, we all have lots of opinions, but if you're actually working in the in the industry, because it's all it's about entertainment for visitors, but it's also about jobs. 
and what are real nuts and bolts things that we're going to do to provide jobs or to maintain your job. Um, as you and I have discussed, and we discussed it last week at the meeting, we, are, we already have a grant program, by the way, guys, and it goes through um, Mr. Shirley's committee, and it's doled out to the theaters and, and that sort of stuff. Um, I've always promoted us being known as the Culture County, and now I've been informed that Savannah has stolen that. So they've already declared themselves the culture county. So we kind of missed the boat on that one, but uh, we have $18 million to give out in federal CARES dollars to give out, and we have to get it out by the end of December. Um, we wrote in the process that not-for-profits count, uh, 501c6 organizations count. Um, what the money is for is to reimburse you for lost revenue due to no fault of your own having to shut down. Uh, we all love the arts and then miraculously we expect them by some miracle to be open when the disease goes away and they're hanging on. So um, I would suggest that the opera, the ballet, the Van Wezel, the Venice Theater, everyone call the county 861 CARE, C-A-R-E, and get on board and fill out the applications. We, we should be able to reimburse you for every month that you were shut down. Um, and you can at least recoup lost revenue there because the, the main focus right now in the middle of a pandemic is to be able to see that when it's all over, you're still there. And then we start from ground zero, building on the great things that we already have in place. Thank you, we appreciate that. Our next question is gonna come from the founder and artistic director of Sarasota Contemporary Dance, Lamus Bolognius Wilmot. Lamus? Hi, my name is Lamus Bolognius Wilmot. I am the artistic director and co-founder of Sarasota Contemporary Dance. And my question is, what steps are you taking to make our community more inclusive for all citizens? Can everyone hear that? No. The question is, what steps uh, are you, would you take to make sure our community is more inclusive for all citizens? So looking at inclusivity as a part of what we need to be doing as a community. Why don't we start with Corey on this one? Thank you. Um, being inclusive is extremely important. We have a, a very diverse community when you really look at it from not just um, the age differences, but also cultural differences and different backgrounds. Sarasota County is somewhat of a melting pot of many different cultures. So one of the things I think we need to do is really look at those areas that are underserved and that don't always get the attention and don't always get the, the revenue and the funds and really reach out to their schools and their centers and their people and bring them in and offer them um, some art opportunities. One of the things that I think is good is what Venice is planning to do with their wall where you can leave positive notes and, and sort of create a kindness community initiative there. I think that having that done across our county could be helpful and this would bring in people of all walks of life. I think it's also extremely important that we get our disability community involved and those who have unique talents, but they can't always access what we usually offer to them and getting them involved in designing art or being able to even create new uh, structures for our county or new sculptures for our county that celebrate their abilities and what they're good at and their passions and likes that is huge and I think that our disability community has been largely ignored uh, across the country and I think bringing them in, bringing all these groups in that haven't been able to really have a voice, giving them a voice through art will be extremely important and that's going to be an initiative of mine going forward. Thank you, Corey. Commissioner Diedrich, your view on this? Um, if we're looking for diversity, number one, re-elect me. Other Right now we've got four white guys and me, so I am 
I am the diversity. <laughs> Otherwise, one of you will have five white guys. So uh, the positivity wall, I'm, I'm glad Corey likes it. My golf partner invented that and I kind of helped her with it. Um, diversity also includes people with disabilities and I helped to build the Loveland residences, which are 90 units for developmentally delayed adults and they named the building after me. So I'm very inclusive in everything I try to do, including housing. I don't know anyone that's excluded and I would challenge you, Jim, to say who's excluded from the arts. Nobody I know. I think we do a great outreach. Booker VPA has been fabulous for years. Our kids at Loveland, we call them kids, but they're developmentally delayed adults. Um, they, they put on a show every year as their, one of their biggest fundraisers. And it's phenomenal if you've never been and it's at the Venice Theater and they usually do a musical and I'm telling you it's, it's a thrill to go there. But I just can't really think of anybody who's excluded from the arts. It's the wonder, one of the wonderful things about the arts. Thank you, Nancy. Mark, your views, please. Very good question. Uh, you know, I see the county as a main driver in uh, trying to find ways to create more inclusiveness and a more inclusive uh, environment. And, uh, but it can't be done alone. It has to be working with uh, various groups and organizations and individuals. Uh, you know, there's so much divisiveness in our country, in our society, uh, but I see the arts, quite frankly, I see the arts as being a way to uh, bridge some of that divide. Uh, everyone is interested in wanting to uh, live a happy, successful life. Uh, and again, the arts tend to uh, allow the expression of uh, all these different kinds of feelings uh, that a person has. But the, the key to, uh, I think, this whole issue is uh, realizing that we need to always have a very inclusive environment. Uh, respect is so paramount uh, with, with any individual, depend, regardless of who they are. Uh, and again, I think the, the county, the county commission can play a very good role. And again, not the most dominant role, but just uh, the role in bringing various groups of people together and trying to uh, make sure that everybody is heard and uh, everybody is respected. So. I, I think this is a very, very good question about uh, uh, inclusiveness. And I certainly, my whole life has been one of trying to, again, bring people together, uh, listen to people, and to try to improve uh, the lot of people, whether it was a student, uh, whether it was a staff member trying to improve their, uh, their professional development, uh, or parents trying to help their child or people within the community. So I'll work hard to do that. Thank you, Mark. And Alice, your views, please. Yes. Um, well, you know, I, I agree with what everybody was saying that I, I do think that uh, we, we do a really good job at uh, providing inclusiveness for everybody. Um, uh, it runs, runs the gamut from children to those uh, disabled to, to the elderly, um, because I've seen that throughout uh, most of the county. Again, um, I will just bring in that I haven't seen that too much here in, in Northport. Uh, because there's just a limited amount of programs that are out there. And I think that um, our existing art centers that we have, again, the Northport Art Center, they, they have children's programs that are going on there and, the, and they offer scholarships they, uh, for free um, for, for kids in the summertime and on Saturdays and um, don't really know what their situation is if they qualify qualify for any grants, but that certainly could be looked into. Um, but I was also thinking in inclusiveness as, again, um, having more available to uh, those of us in South County and Northport and Inglewood. Uh, there's been sidewalk art in other parts of the county. Um, I think it's Venice that had the pigs, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And the city of Sarasota had the pianos out there for a while. And I was talking to um, the director of the Northport Art Center, and she said that they do have something in the works to bring gopher tortoises uh, throughout uh, Northport, since the gopher tortoises is, is kind of the uh, signature wildlife that we, we have here, one of our species anyway. Um, but I'd love to see 
more art brought into, say, the Garden of the Five Senses, which was uh, created uh, specifically uh, to accommodate um, uh, disabled people, wheelchairs. They, they opened up the Boundless Playground, I think it's called. Um, so that would be a, a really great place to, to have more art opportunities there and offer something like Art in the Park uh, for children, and uh, it's right next to the, uh, near the senior center, it would just be a perfect location to, to have more inclusiveness of, of those two age groups. Thank you, thank you very much. But right, this next question uh, is, what three things would you do to deepen the county's investment in its creative economy, meaning cultural tourism, indirect and direct jobs, nonprofits, for-profits, but in looking at deeping our investment in the creative economy. Mark, why don't we start with you? Again, great question. Uh, three things. Uh, I think that we need to, again, I'm gonna come back to this theme of continue to build partnerships, especially in the arts uh, and the Cultural Alliance of Sarasota with other groups and organizations. Uh, I think building partnerships to me is so critical because it, it uni it's a, a unifying opportunity uh, when you uh, empower people, bring people together, ask their ideas, get their, get their ideas, try to uh, put them into action. So that to me is number one. Secondly is funding and creating a artist in residence position. Uh, in, in a sense, a, uh, uh, a way to be able to have a grant that we could use monies to be able to have an individual that throughout the county could be an artist in residence. Think about what that could do. It could uh, mean that you would have an individual going to various groups and organizations. I know we have an artist in residency program in our schools, <laughs> et cetera, I know, I know that. But the point is that this individual could be an individual that would go down to Northport and talk with individuals about what's special about your area. Let's create some type of an art project. What about in the Venice area, sort of a mid, uh, uh, mid county or in the Northern part of the county. I mean, one, one thing that's really been interesting, I hope people have had a chance to see it, is over by Benderson Park. They have uh, at times had outdoor murals. Uh, tremendous uh, impact, I think, on people who take the time to, to look at this. Well, these are the kinds of projects that an artist in residence could do. Uh, and then third, uh, I think just the whole idea of, uh, of having uh, the Sarasota County uh, Commission uh, really work closely with the schools. You know, the schools and our young people and the people who are teaching our young people. To me, this is one of the most critical areas. Uh, certainly I come from an educational background, but I know the importance of education, education of the arts, both uh, visual and creative arts. Uh, I, I know that that is crucial. It's creativity at its best. And when we help to have our young people uh, learn the importance and the, and the uh, greatness of getting that as a background that helped them, whether they go into the arts as a career or they go into some other field, they will bring that creativity to it and they'll be better for it and they'll make others better for it as well. So those are the three things I would talk about. Thank you, Mark. Alice, what things would you consider? Well, I would uh, really focus, uh, like to focus more on the cultural um, aspect of that of the county's investment. Uh, I think we do a really a pretty good job with the arts creativeness, uh, except for again, and I'll say it again, bringing it down here to Northport. <laughs> but the cultural economy, people are really interested in history. And again, I, I have a real strong um, understanding and, and I love history. And um, there, there are things to be done for celebrating our cultural history. Uh, next year, Sarasota County is celebrating its centennial. Um, again, being on the Sarasota Historical Committee, we were talking about that until, of course, COVID. Um, but, uh, you know, people want to know about history, and it's not just the history uh, in the big buildings or the, the, uh, the houses of the well-known founders of Sarasota County, but it's also those little little houses and, and, and little places that um, are kind of neglected that people don't don't know about, um, especially again down here in Northport. Um, you know, Northport was, yes, it was founded by uh, general development. It was a developer's uh, dream, but nevertheless, that's our history. And those houses are now referred to as mid-century houses. And uh, we have warm mineral springs, we have 
uh, an area that is actually filled with a lot of uh, interesting facts and information and people just don't don't know about it. So I would really would like to see uh, some more uh, geared towards that. Uh, you know, our natural environment is really our cultural uh, offerings in this area. This it was ranch land. So we had cowboys again, riding across um, the, uh, the land and for people to understand that and the role that the Mayakahatchee Creek played in that going out to the Mayaka River. Um, you know, I, I learned that there used to be a a barge that would take uh, cattle down the, the creek to the river. Uh, people don't don't even know about that, and uh, would like to see more of that um, emphasized um, here in Northport. Thank you, Nancy. Your views on the creative economy? Did you ask me, Jim? Yes, I did. Okay, three things. Uh, Make sure the arts and culture, well, they are included in the Bayfront project. I support the Bayfront project. My opponent has declared at our last debate that he does not support the Bayfront project. I think we need to build a new Van Wezel there closer to the road, bigger so that we can have bigger shows and larger audience, larger auditorium. <coughs> So the Bayfront would be number one. Number two, we have a very valuable resource, uh, the Ringling Studio that hardly anybody know. We, they know we have Ringling School of Art and Design and film student kids, but they don't know much about the studio. That's already sitting there. And then number three is the, the redo that the County Commission is doing with our economic development uh, partnership. We have totally revamped it, got rid of what doesn't work, trying to keep what does work. And Jim, since you attend those meetings on behalf of the arts, you know that every time it comes up, I try to include the arts. Well, we won that one. Uh, if you were at the last meeting, and I think you were, Mr. Bullock has said that we have gotten rid of the film commissioner and the assistant is creating a different category called the creative category. And that will have maybe a pot of money dedicated to either film or other creative um, aspects that we can bring to our community. Because frankly, the arts, not just the fine arts, but music, it's the sizzle to the steak. And to quote that great philosopher, Lady Gaga, we're on the edge of glory here. <laughs> and we're <laughs> almost there. And we're living through horrible times, but uh, we have all the ingredients for greatness. Thank you. And Corey? Thank you. Uh, I think continuing and um, improving our partnerships with our schools all the way from elementary to middle school to high school, partnering with um, our charter schools as well to really promote arts education and also the ability for our students to be able to create art that goes into the community and becomes more of a permanent part of our community. I want to continue to see promotion of all the arts, um, music, theater, dance, uh, paintings, drawings. We have so many talented uh, students that I've seen just in my school that I work at, and they do all sorts of art. Uh, some of it is theater, some of it is comic book drawing. So we have so many things that we can use in our community. There are also communities that I've seen and they do a great job with having people in the community, not just students, but adults as well, paint murals on our structures that are already there. So you see so many of these subdivisions that are going up and they have walls around them. Some of those have the potential to be have murals on them or paintings on them. That makes um, what can kind of be a bland design very fun and unique to the environment. And that would be one consideration that we should have to do that. The third thing is um, promoting the kindness community and bringing that in. That includes not just art, but also leadership skills, um, fine arts that can be incorporated into music, theater as well. It's really an all around program that would work for our community and our culture. So those are the initiatives that I look forward to after being elected. Thank you all, we appreciate that. 
Now, sometimes the uh, answers to our questions do a little overlap, but our next question is going to come to us from Nancy Rucker, who is the chair of the Sarasota County Arts Education Partnership. Nancy, what's your question, please? Hello, this is Nancy Rucker. I'm chair of the Sarasota County Arts Education Partnership. I would like to ask, what is your view of arts education in our schools? Could all of you hear that question from Nancy? Yes. Your view of arts education in our schools. And since we have Nancy uh, in the upper right-hand corner and Nancy questioning, Nancy, would you open up for us, please? I, cer I certainly will. I'd like you to see this lovely trophy, which <laughs> is from the uh, Arts Alliance, and it's the Nancy Rucker Arts Education Leadership Award <laughs> presented to me for defending the arts. So it's good to see her again. And I know she spent decades and decades on arts in the schools. Um, I, we're, we're running for county commission, not school board. We try to cooperate with the school system. I'm thrilled that they have a new superintendent and our county administrator has reached out to him. So we're gonna to work together. But um, where I do support arts and education is I really feel that it's dropout prevention. I think a lot of things keep kids in school that otherwise would have dropped out. I think football is dropout prevention. But I know with my grandson, he was a very gifted pianist. And if it wasn't for music and education, he probably would have been a dropout. So anything I can do as a county commissioner, and I thoroughly understand the school system and their process, we're happy to do that. In fact, um, I was, these things do overlap as a state senator. I was responsible for getting the money for the Northport Technical College. Uh, and then next door to it, we put the library for the county. So when you combine facilities, it, it makes it a little bit cheaper, but I, I would be all for combining theaters with schools to chip in with, with schools to have, you know, um, better theaters for them. Venice has a great one, Booker does, but some of the other schools may need a little help. Northport, I was down there for a play. Uh, there's a little small, but still, you know, whatever we can do to cooperate, I'm willing to do. Thank you. Mark, your views on arts education. You know, I've already uh, said how important the arts are and how as a school employee, as a school administrator, as a principal and a superintendent, how I always worked hard to promote the arts. You know, one of the things I was always very proud of is that whenever we had a uh, conflict from a standpoint of an event, let's say a basketball game and a, uh, a, a performance on stage, I always went to the performance on stage. I love sports but I always appreciated the hard work that also went on to, uh, to do a stage performance. So the visual and performing arts are to me very critical. And I've always been extremely supportive of them because I, as I said in an earlier response, uh, being creative uh, is not necessarily only during the school age time. It, it carries over uh, to hopefully a career. So, and not necessarily in the, in the performing arts. It could be in, as an engineer, it could be uh, as, a, as a lawyer, as a, as a whatever. The point is, is that you can be using your arts, uh, uh, art education in, in great ways. But I will just try to draw a picture for a moment because this is the way I've always tried to explain things, especially when I was in uh, a school. I would say the following, you know, English and math and social studies and science, those are all critical. They're very, very important. But if you were cre creating a picture and you had a canvas and you put those on the canvas, they would be kind of in black and white. Add the arts, add the visual and performing arts, and all of a sudden the color comes to that canvas. The vibrancy comes to that canvas. The beauty comes to that canvas. They're all important, but the, but the, uh, the arts, they bring such an important uh, element to our lives. And so that's where I come from, and I'm very supportive 
of the performing of visual arts and whatever else goes with that to try to help them. So thanks for listening to that. And thank you. Alice, your views, please. Yes, well, as a former public school teacher for 36 years, um, I'm very familiar with inadequate budgets, uh, especially for arts and, and music. Uh, art education is, is extremely important. And like I said, it, it uh, addresses a particular learning style of, of students when you really need to address all those learning styles so that they can find one that's going to work for them. Um, but I, I do believe there should be more opportunities for students to showcase their artwork throughout the community. Uh, for example, um, early on in our tour to Northport uh, bicycle ride that we offer every year, we um, went to the art department at Northport High School and uh, did a contest for someone to, uh, for students to submit a logo for our uh, bike tour. And uh, we did choose a winner and we've had that logo for uh, seven out of the 10 years that we've had the, um, the, the bike tour. And it's, it's a great logo. And I just would love to have seen that say permanently mount it somewhere or put out um, near the, the Northport Performing Arts Center, uh, performance center that's there. So people would see the talent of our young people and, uh, and realize you know, what they can do. Um, so I'd like to see that done more often, um, and then also displaying their artwork in places where people are actually going to, to see it. Um, uh, Charlotte County, for example, would every month, uh, a particular school would showcase uh, their students' artwork, but that's only if people happen to go to the, the school board <laughs> building. It really should be in places where people are going to be able to, to see it. And I'm sure we can get um, members of our business community who would be willing to do that. Um, and uh, it, it would be a wonderful addition to our community. Thank you, appreciate that. And Corey, your thoughts, please. Thank you. Uh, I wanna give kudos to our school board for all they have done to promote arts education. I think they've really done uh, a pretty good job of that with the funding that is available to them. And I want to thank all the individuals that work to help us get the Suncoast Technical College and, and all that great um, things that that's brought to our community. I believe so much in arts education because I've seen the impact of it with our students. I work within our college and career readiness program, and this is the fourth year that we've had it at the middle school level. And I have to say that over the past few years, there have been a number of students who never really mentioned art or being an artist when you talk to them, but they find other things within the arts field that they enjoy, such as animation, um, video game design, film animation. And we have been able to take some of our students to Ringling to see all the wonderful programs they have with digital design and all the other aspects that are outside of what we typically think of as art. So really promoting those aspects of art, the digital designs, the filmmaking, the animations, you could work for Disney or Pixar, or maybe use those skills to go elsewhere in a different career field, such as IT, computer programming, promoting that, that excuse me, within our schools and enabling our students to be able to use that education to promote them higher in their fields is extremely important. And we've been able to really help a lot of students out by really promoting that art education to them and showing them how it can work, not just in art, but in other fields as well. So I'll work hard with the school board to continue to support that in any way that I can and continue to do things like what Alice said about having students design a logo um, we had students design logos that we picked for Holly's Hope, the nonprofit that I work with in Northport. Um, the logo that we have was designed by some high school students. So getting them involved and having them take ownership is extremely rewarding and important. Thank you. Well, we have time for one question from uh, the call-in questions. And uh, this one is kind of an in-the-moment question. And uh, so I'm going to give you just a few seconds to think about it. And uh, the question would be, if you were a county commissioner right now, which one of you is, uh, what would you do to expedite the CARES Act funding for Sarasota County? What would you do to expedite the CARES Act funding for Sarasota County? Mark, why don't we start with you? Thank you. Again, great question. You know, I, I remember watching one of the commission meetings uh, in July 
And uh, this is when the, uh, some discussion was taking place about you know, setting up the, uh, the parameters as far as how monies would be uh, given to people who uh, requested it. And so that was July. And then I watched it again in August. And I heard discussion about it again. And then I watched it again this past month in September. And in fact, the commissioners, to their credit, kind of said, kind of a, a said to the people who are putting this together, you know, we want this money out there. You know, I think there's a sense of urgency. We are in a tremendous, tremendous problem for people. You know, we have people who are not only sick and ill because of the coronavirus, but we also have all the people that are trying to, to support them. But in addition, the impact that it's had on our economy and small business and people out of work, um, there's, we're, we need a sense of urgency. And I keep going back to my own experiences. If I waited, if I had a similar situation going on and I waited July and August and September to come to my board, I think they would say, hey, Mark, come on. Where's your sense of urgency? People are hurting. We need to get that money out to them. We obviously have to have some rules and regulations. I understand that. But don't put roadblocks in front of them. There was an article in the Herald Tribune within the last week that talked about the, all, the, all the hoops that people have to go through to prevent things that possibly could happen. And I understand if there's fraud, uh, you know, the county could be on the hook for that. I understand that. But there's people that are hurting. And so my comment to you is this one word, urgency. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Corey? I think that we need to extremely improve the efficiency of how we're getting the CARES Act funding act out. And I will echo what Mark said, urgency. In the education system, as Mark described, if you dawdle for this long, it's not going to end up good for you or your students or anyone else. The business owners and the nonprofits and those that that CARES Act money needs to be going to, they have a right to receive that money and they have a right to expect it in a timely manner. And you may hear some things that, oh, everything is great and the county's getting it out, but that's not the truth. The facts are that many business owners have given up because they haven't been able to obtain that money in a timely frame, or it's been so hard, they don't have hours and hours and hours to sit there and try to go through all the steps you have to go through. Yes, you have to put stipulations in there. You have to have regulation. You have to use the guidance that's given to you by the federal government that gave the money in the first place. But you have to do it with a sense of now. Think of yourself as a business owner and what would happen if you owned a business and you had to shut down from COVID, you're almost gonna be bankrupt. You don't know how you're gonna feed your family and you hear from the county, oh, everything's good, we're getting it out. It's not going fast enough. It needs to come out and it needs to get out as quickly as possible. Economic um, pain has not begun yet if this CARES Act funding does not get out. There's going to be extreme economic and social pain um, for a lot of people if this funding doesn't get out now. Thank you, Corey. Alice, your views, please. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I I can personally vouch for uh, how application processes can be really, really complicated so that those uh, who really could use it don't uh, ever get to even apply for it. I know some years ago I had applied for, I think it was a tourist grant uh, through one of the agencies in the county and, and it required going to a, a, a workshop and they only had the workshops during the day. Again, being a full-time teacher, that was out of the question. So they arranged for a special workshop. And I remember having to go up to Sarasota, the city of Sarasota and sit there. And I was actually with the woman who puts on that chalk festival. She couldn't make that workshop meeting either. And you know, we had to sit there and watch this PowerPoint and it just seemed to be almost like punitive, you know, that you, you want this grant, well, that we're gonna make you do this. And then of course the application process, and I think Corey just alluded to this, it's very different if you have a nonprofit where you have a paid staff uh, and a nonprofit such as what I've had with People for Trees, we're all volunteers when, and we're, you know, we work and, and have other commitments. And 
some of the um, the applications were extremely convoluted, and there wasn't really ever any um, assistance with filling that out. It would be I wouldn't have minded if they said, "Hey, come up here, here and sit, and we will help you through the application process. We will tell you what you need to do and and what we're looking for." Because some of the questions we weren't even really sure what they were looking for, and and I I, I echo what. Corey said is, is some of these grants, I told my group, I'm sorry, but I just am not going to spend hours and days going through this process. And you know what, I'll, I'll just donate the money myself. It was really, uh, you know, the time involved. And uh, I think that's what's happened with the care funding. From what I understand, the same thing of business owners have said, it, you know, they don't have um, accountants on their payroll, they have to do all this themselves to figure figure this out. One of the grants I know we applied for, they wanted a, a certified a fis, a financial report or something for five years. So we had to go pay a CPA $500 to do that just so we can get a grant. And and I said, well, we need that anyway. But still, it's, it's those things that I think people who are involved with this don't truly understand, um, you know, the gamut of what you're talking about when you put, put this, uh, these uh, opportunities out there for people. Thank you, Emily. and Commissioner Dietrich. Okay, I get to clean up. Um, Mark, I'm not in your race, but I really can't let your comments go by because uh, you're mistaken. Uh, we started discussing this in April and you went through all the months. That's three different pots of money. Uh, the federal government was not getting to anybody quick enough from Jump Street so we in our economic development, our EDC Corp, we took $4 million that we had to recruit businesses and we distributed that, that locally to our local businesses to help them out. So, and we had like a one page application, here's the money and it went quickly. Uh, Mr. Lewis was in charge of that. He did a great job. The second round of money uh, was the PPP money, which finally arrived from Washington. And so we had to distribute that. This is the third go round of money, the CARES Act money. We have $18.5 million. A couple of weeks ago, we set the parameters, which we have to follow federal guidelines and then I, I could pick out a bevy of headlines for the Sarasota Herald. They're gonna either say, you didn't get the money out. Headline number two, you gave the money to the richest people in town. Headline number three, you gave it to crooks and scam artists. If we make any mistakes, we, the county, have to buy those loans back. So even with all that, the fact that we have to follow federal guidelines, I and probably all of my fellow commissioners, we're not happy with how this is going. We only have till the end of December, which I mentioned at the top of your show here, to get this money out. It's like we're riding around with tons of money and we can't even give it to anybody. People are not applying. Our paperwork is too picky, mainly because a lot of it's federal. Um, we didn't have enough staff. We reached out to chambers. We called everybody we could call. Number And we called everybody that needs money. The food bank, not-for-profits, huge outreach. The chambers didn't want to work on even their own members because they took a look at the paperwork and said, well, you know, we'd have to hire on extra people. So I think what we did is finally, we're hiring on the extra people for the business organizations to help their own businesses fill out the paperwork. But we are still not happy because you can't call this any kind of speed. And we have that December deadline. So this Thursday, we're having a meeting, which I hope you'll all tune into instead of just reading the Sarasota Herald report. You can actually watch the meeting later. Um, I think we're going to be asking our staff a lot of hard questions and asking 
you know, what we can do to streamline the paperwork and still guarantee that the money is going to the right people. We are going to probably, can't speak for the rest of the board, but I would support upping it from a maximum of 20,000 to a maximum of 50,000. Because as Alice said, I agree with Alice, for 20 grand, a lot of businesses aren't bothering because they'd have to go pay a CPA to do the paperwork and they figure it's not worth it. So we want to make it worth it. We want to make it effective. We want it to make a difference in people's lives. Otherwise, why are we doing it? And we also do get complaints from the minority community that they think they didn't get their fair share and um, they, we are doing special outreach to help them with the, with the paperwork and hopefully we'll be streamlining the paperwork. Thank you, Nancy. Well, I want to do to all of the candidates. I want to thank you for your time, for your candor, for your willingness to serve our community. You know, government is, uh, is hard work and, and fair government is very difficult to achieve. The one thing that the arts and cultural community want each of you to know is that we are here to support you in every way we can. We will do everything that we can, both individually and cumulatively, to continue to make this one of the greatest places in the country to live. And we want to thank you for your willingness to take leadership in that. I also want to thank Florida Studio Theater for allowing us to be here tonight and, and have the forum with them. And to all of our audience out there, the biggest thing that we encourage you to do is please vote. No matter who your candidate is, this is your chance to have your say in how our community is run. So thank you to our candidates. Thank you to our, author, to our um, uh, listeners. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you all. Thanks, Jim. Good night, Good night. everybody. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye.